Hi guys, I guess school is in session. Welcome to my class, Technology and Society. My name is Dr. Larry Carver, and today I will be talking about the internet, its history, early developments, and current trends with regards to this great communication platform. I will start by saying that contrary to popular belief, Al Gore didn't invent the internet. The early beginnings of what we know today as the internet can be traced to a presentation by American computer scientist Joseph Licklider, who in 1962 presented his intergalactic network concept to a group of colleagues at an ARPA conference in California. His writings about a global computer network are considered by many the foundation of today's internet. In order to give you some perspective, let's listen to Geek Course Ethan Zuckerman. Jump in and talk on this panel about the future of digital community. And I've been asked to try to provide some context by providing a little bit of the history of digital community. Um, and this is an interesting thing to do in front of a room full of broadcasters because the truth is, journalists are pretty good at writing the rough draft of history. And as a result, most of us know who famous journalists are. Uh, on the other hand, geeks are really bad at history. Uh, and even the geeks in the room, for the most part, cannot tell you who these men up on the screen are. I will tell you, they are the guys at BBN who came up with the interface message processor, which was basically the first internet router. Uh, these guys, not Al Gore, are the actual uh, fathers of the internet. Um, the name internet was coined by Ben Cerf and Bob Cann in 1974 when they used the term in one of their papers describing the transmission control protocol known today as TCPIP. Two years later, Dr. Robert Metcalf invented the Ethernet cable, and this single piece of hardware innovation opened the door to a new era in computer communications. In 1977, Dennis Hayes and Dale Hetherington invented the modem, and this single piece of hardware ushered a new era in analog to digital communications that allowed the internet to grow. A year later, Gary Twerk, a marketing manager for a computer company, sent out the first spam email. He emailed all of ARPANET 600 scientists at once because he didn't want to take the time to type individual messages for each one of them. This is the guy who is largely responsible for the torture of our inboxes today, believe it or not. Throughout the 1980s, the internet continued to grow, and we experienced the birth of the domain name system, the implementation of the TCP IP protocol, and many other innovations that helped the internet grow. As interest in commercial use of the internet started to pick up steam, in 1989, the first internet service provider in the United States was formed. Its name, the world, captured the essence of this new information sharing tool. At the same time, other pioneers like CompuServe, PSINet, and Prodigy were among the early ISPs of this period. Worth noting, though, is the fact that by the end of the decade, CompuServe was the first ISP to offer internet connectivity through a dial-up connection to the homes of millions of users in the United States. At their peak, CompuServe had 3 million subscribers worldwide. In 1990, after Tim Berners coined the term World Wide Web, the Internet as we know it today was born. What's interesting about his story is that he trained as a physicist and became a computer scientist by accident while working on a project to share information between researchers at CERN, which at the time housed the largest Internet node in Europe. He is also credited with creating the first browser, which he named World Wide Web, but later renamed the Nexus to avoid confusion between the browser and the actual World Wide Web. This decade saw many changes and innovations, but the most significant one was the release of Mosaic, the first internet browser to display inline images in the same window instead of in a separate one. Its release is credited with expanding the internet's popularity and many browsers currently in use today retain many of its original features. Throughout the 90s, AOL will grow to become the largest ISP in the world with over 30 million users logged in at any given time using their software to see what the internet was all about. They introduced us to innovations such as chat rooms and their ever popular AOL Instant Messenger. Search engines also played an important role in the expansion of the internet because they help us do our research in order to gather information. This decade has seen its first share of them, and I don't know if any of you is old enough to remember, but 
Alta Vista, Lycos, and SGs were some of my favorites at the time. In 1998, the whole search engine market changed in a flash. As Sergey Brin and Larry Page, Stanford University students at the time, quoted what we know today as Google for a class project. Little did they know their research will become the largest search engine in the world and the leader in internet sole advertising. Since its inception, their company has completely turned the internet on its head by introducing a variety of internet related products that have become part of everything we do in our everyday lives. They currently hold the rights to global mapping systems using Google Earth, the most popular mobile operating system, Android, and have recently joined the internet connected TV market with their own television set. Due to the rapid addition of millions of new domains since the domain name system was formed, the domain name registration system was created and is currently controlled by the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers or ICANN for short. The system imposed fees on all domains except those used by the government and educational institutions. During this decade, we have also witnessed the advent of commercial electronic platforms that allow businesses and consumers to purchase goods and services online. Companies like AOL, Amazon, and eBay are largely responsible for the introduction of online shopping to consumers. In what we know today as e-commerce, the development of these transaction systems helped form a virtual economy, one without time zones or national border constraints. Another turning point in the evolution of the Internet was the standardization of Wi-Fi protocols and Sean Fanning's release of the music sharing application Napster. He's responsible for planting the seed for the distribution of digital music online, and even though his application was labeled illegal at the time, it greatly contributed to the development of current file sharing applications. Many of you take this for granted, but without his ingenuity and that of many other early pioneers of the time, you wouldn't be able to enjoy your digital music on your mobile device today. The Walkman will have probably lasted another 30 years, but that is of course if Apple hadn't come out with iTunes. The beginning of the 21st century was marked by the burst of the dot-com bubble. We have seen internet startups by the hundreds rise and fall like a roller coaster. This next century also brought with it a renaissance of sorts to Silicon Valley as a new crop of innovators launch what I call Generation X platforms. Services like Gmail, iTunes, Wikipedia, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, all of which have become mainstays in American culture and around the world. Now let's talk a little bit about YouTube, the 800 pound gorilla of online video. This company was formed in early 2005 by Stephen Chan, Chad Harley, and Joette Kareem friends who at the time worked for PayPal. They were looking for a way to share personal videos online, so they came up with this concept. They went from having just one video to 1.2 billions currently online. Their overnight success and the public's interest on the site caught the eye of Google, who acquired the company for $1.6 billion one year after the first video was published on the site. The current internet trend is the rapid proliferation of social networks online where Facebook and Twitter have single-handedly revolutionized the way we communicate with one another, making it possible for millions of users worldwide to share information, pictures, music, and videos while staying connected with one another. The Internet has also become a form of entertainment these days, and services like Apple iTunes and Netflix are primarily responsible for this trend. Netflix in particular has over 10 million subscribers in the United States, and so far has delivered over 1 billion DVDs. They also hold the largest collection of online streaming video with over 17,000 titles in their movie catalog. iTunes, for their part, has sold over 10 billion songs worldwide since opening their online store. Their recently added Beatles collection, for example, sold 2 million songs on the first day it was available. Interestingly enough, the iTunes store ran movies as well, but their catalog is very small compared to Netflix. Apple has also created a niche market with over 300,000 apps in the App Store that can be used in any of their mobile devices connected to the Internet. I know all is catching up with me, but before I forget, let's talk about email for a second. 
This simple form of electronic messaging has almost put the U.S. postal system out of business, and it has forced them to reinvent themselves due to the decline in letter mailing and the extensive use of email as an everyday communication platform. I know many of you don't even think about it these days, but the invention of email actually predates the internet because in early 1961, ARPANET used what is known today as file directory to exchange messages between their computer networks. The ad symbol was first introduced to the masses in 1971 by Ray Tomlinson, who used the symbol to separate the name of the user from that of the computer. The development of advanced internet protocols such as SMTP and POP serve as a foundation to this messaging system and companies like AOL, Hotmail, and Yahoo contributed to email's rapid adoption and increase in popularity as the de facto standard for electronic messaging systems. Just to give you an idea of how big and important the internet has become, let's take a look at the most recent traffic data survey where it was found there are 1.73 billion internet users worldwide with a predominant population based in Asia. We must also take a look at the amount of websites worldwide, which are now numbering well over 234 million. This has led to the development of IPv6, a more robust and secure internet protocol in service since 1988, and the replacement of IPv4, the original protocol used to host the vast majority of internet sites today. Then there's Facebook, the social network phenomenon, with over 400 million users worldwide. Texting has also become very popular, and in some instances is even replacing traditional voice conversation as the preferred method of communication. Well, now that you have a better understanding of how the Internet originated and of the many innovations that made it what it is today, please take the time to read Chapter 3 on your book. This presentation is not inclusive, and one hour is just not enough to cover everything there is to know about it. Also, don't forget your weekly discussion board and Digo posting. That's all I have for now. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.